Hello, welcome back to this, the final section of Basic, Math Basic Mathematics by Sergey Lang. This is section 17.6, it's called Kramer's Rule. I've been Jonathan Gardner. This has been over a year long journey to make these videos for you. Um, I have not uploaded consistently every day, so obviously you'll be able to watch these in much less time than it take me to, took me to make them. But regardless, this is the final section. We now come to solving linear equations with three unknowns using determinants. Um, now, keep in mind that in section 2.2, he gives you the elimination method. And even for three by three matrix, for three by three, or three equations with three unknowns, the elimination method will likely be the quickest way to get the answer, okay? Kramer's rule really is useful for higher order matrices, right? So when you go way beyond three by three, and you have like hundreds of variables, just like that. So let's write this out, x, a11, x1 plus a12 x2 plus a13 x3 is equal to b1 a21 x1 plus a22 x2 plus a23 x3 is equal to b2 a31 x1 plus a32 x2 plus a33 x3 is equal to b3 okay and so we can rewrite this as x1 times a1 plus x2 times a2 plus x3 times a3 is equal to b. Okay, that is how we can do it in vector notation, right? And these are the column matrices. This one obviously is a112131. This is a122232 and a132333, okay? So theorem four of chapter 17. It says that as long as the determinant of A is not equal to zero, then X1 is equal to the determinant of B, A2, A3, all over the determinant of A. X2 is equal to the determinant of A1, B, A3, all over the determinant of A. And X3 is equal to D, the determinant of A1, a2 and B all over the determinant of A. Okay? And we could write this out in component form, but I don't want to. Okay? Um, so this, this is the reason why when you're dealing with higher order matrices, you stop using components and you start talking about columns, vectors. And worst case, I would have written this out as A, I, J, X, J, so the sum from j equals 1 to 3 of this is equal to bi for i and 1, 2, and 3. So all of these equations could have been written out this way, right, with that one expression. Okay, so that's why we use these kind of expressions, because we really get sick and tired of writing these things out. All right, proof. We use the same technique for the proof as we did in the 2 by 2 case. So we note that the determinant of b a2 a3 is the same as the determinant of x1 a1 plus x2 a2 plus x3 a3 and a2 and a3. Where did we get that from? Well, we got that from the original equation. This equation here. Right? So b is equal to that. Okay? And then we see that this is equal to x1 a1 a2 a3 plus the determinant of x1 a2 a2 a3 plus the determinant of x a3 a2 a3 okay these ones are going to be zero okay because they have the same columns and so we're left with this is equal to x times the determinant of a1 a2 a3 which is this just the determinant of the a matrix okay and so in the end, I hope you guys are able to see the top of this page. I'd be really frustrated if you didn't get to see it. So we, we determined that X is equal to the determinant of B, A2, A3, all over the determinant of A. This is, I'm sorry, this is X1, 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 X2, X3. Okay, so X1 is equal to this. And if you wanted to solve for X2, then you would use the, the determinant of A, A1, B, and then A3. This will give you X2, and then if you wanted to solve for X3, 
you would use this determinant to solve for x3, okay? So that's rather straightforward. It's a rather simple proof. Um, theorem four is known as Kramer's rule. Um, it's a very straightforward way to get the determinant of these linear systems of equations, okay? Moving on, we have theorem five. If I could write, okay, theorem five, there we go. Let A be a three by three matrix whose determinant is not zero. So A is three by three, and the determinant of A is not zero, okay? Then for any column B, there exists numbers x1, x2, x3. So for any, there is a solution x1 of a1 plus x2 of a2 plus x3 of a3 is equal to b. In other words, this system of linear equations always has a solution, okay? Uh, the theorem to prove this for any b is a little bit more involved, okay? But essentially, if you were to do this proof, you would just prove that there's a number that will have a determinant, whether that determinant is zero or not. But as long as the determinant of a itself is not zero, then there will be a solution, okay? So he omits the proof here. Um, I think the reason why you have to be careful is because you want to prove both backwards and forwards. So you want to assume any B and then be able to prove this, and then you want to prove that there is a B for any system of equations here. So it's, it's a little bit more involved there. So example, let's do some examples. So we have this equation. We have three X plus two Y plus four Z is equal to one. And then we have two X minus Y plus Z is equal to zero. And then X plus two Y plus 3z is equal to 1. So you'll recognize this as the equation for three different lines. So we're basically trying to find where all three of these lines intersect in three dimensions. Okay, so we prove that x is equal to the determinant 1, 0, 1, 2, minus 1, 2, and 4, 1, 3, all over the determinant of 3, 2, 1, 2, minus 1, 2, and four, one, three. Okay, so I was just basically reading off the coefficients here. So because X is the first one here, we're substituting B for that first column, okay? Y is equal to the determinant, we're gonna use three, two, one, one, zero, one, and then four, one, three, and we're gonna divide by the same, okay? I'll just write determinant of A, and then finally Z is equal to the determinant 3, 2, 1, 2, minus 1, 2, and then 1, 0, 1, divided by the determinant of A. Okay, so that's the solution. Do we want to actually solve these determinants? No, I don't want to do it. Okay. Um, and if you were to actually solve them, you should get that x is equal to minus 1 over 5, y is equal to 0, why is that the case? I don't know. I'll have to look at that. And this is two fifths. Okay. That's the answers you should get. Okay. There are the final four exercises. Number one, fill in the missing steps of the proof of Kramer's rule. Uh, exercise 11 and 12 of the preceding section will help. Number two, write out in full the proof of Kramer's rule for X2 and X3. Uh, number three, let A1, A2, A3 be columns with three by three matrix A and assume that there exist numbers X1, X2, X3, not all zero, such that X blah, blah, blah equals zero. Prove that the determinant of A equals zero. So number three is interesting. I'll write this down. So we have X1, A1 plus X2, A2 plus X3, A3 is equal to zero, the zero the vector. Okay, so now what we are trying to prove is that the determinant of A must be equal to zero in this case, okay? So there are no solutions for this um, that we can use Kramer's rule for, okay? Number four, solve the linear equations of chapter two, section two by Kramer's rule. So you can go back to chapter two, section two, take those linear equations, use Kramer's rule, solve them, and see if it's actually quicker or not than when you did it the first time. Hey guys, with that, that's the end of this chapter. This is the end of this book. I thank you for watching with me for this whole time. Hope you have a great day. Take care and bye-bye. This video was part of my series on basic mathematics by Sergey Lang. 
Be sure to subscribe and ring the bell, like and share this video. You can find me on Discord and support me on Patreon. Thanks a million.